Hello. Welcome to the Small Talk Primer. This is part of the Small Talk Quick Start Guide, and this is meant to be very quick. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk Product Manager. Any feedback, please send to athomas at syncom.com. So like we noticed, this is a very quick primer to get you up and running in the Small Talk language. Before we have seen why object oriented if you follow the previous short screencast and, and basically it it gives you a great way to think about design it is really fantastic for organization of your code and data and in a nutshell it reduces complexity so why small talk well small talk was developed over over a decade of research and development and multiple iterations by some very, very bright people who really carefully thought this out. I don't know of any other language that has had as, as big and timely an investment into developing a computer language. So what, what did Smalltalk do? Well, it, it coined the term object oriented. It was made for people to work with. And it's still arguably the most productive general purpose programming language available. And, and, and there's some, some, uh, uh, documentation to back that up if you're interested. So small talk lets you get things done very quickly and is fun. One of the things that you'll notice when you get into the development and, and I'll show you, it's super interactive. You can get things done really quickly and easily. And again, small talk reduces complexity. So, so what else did Smalltalk do? It was developed at Xerox PARC uh, starting in the 70s, and it was basically that whole decade plus. And it introduced the graphical user interface. I mentioned coined the term object-oriented, pioneered drag and drop using a mouse. You may have heard of the model view controller architecture. But here's one thing you may not realize. You have files on your computer. You keep them in folders. You have a desktop on your computer. That's an office metaphor, and it came from, guess, Smalltalk. So let's start with some of the basics. In Smalltalk, everything is an object. This makes things really consistent. So what is an object? An object combines data and code. How do you interact with an object? You send it a message. And we'll see there's three kinds of message messages. Uh, whenever you send a message to an object, it responds with an object, e even if you're not expecting one. And usually it's the, the object itself if you're not expecting one. But whenever you send a message, you get an object in return. There's a couple kinds of, uh, of objects we'll, we'll talk about right off the bat, and that's an immediate object. And that an immediate object is one you can type in. So if you type in five, that's an integer object. And then there's objects that are created from a class, which we'll, we'll get into. So when you create your, your, your customer object, you'll create a class that says basically the definition of that object. But other things like numbers and strings, you can simply type in. Messages and syntax. So sending a message in Smalltalk is the equivalent of, uh, of invoking a function or procedure in a traditional language. Objects respond to messages and return an object. There's only five reserved words in Smalltalk. Nil true, uh, nil true, false, self, and super. You might, you might say, well, why? How do you do things like control structures? Everything's done with messages. And, and that's part of the beauty, too, because a lot of the messages you get to name. So basically, you, you can dictate how, how your code reads. And, and that's very powerful. Three kinds of messages, unary, binary, and keyword. And let's take a look right here. And we'll go later, and we'll put this in a workspace. Here's a num uh, an integer object. You can type in five odd, and that's a unary message. And if you uh, if you highlight this and do it, it will say true. This is a binary, and binary messages are one or two. And, and largely, 
it's almost a syntactic sugar to be able to do math comfortably. So uh, binary messages are one and two characters. And finally, there's keyword messages. Keyword messages have a colon. So here we have 3.1459, a number, an immediate object, round to 0 0.01, and this will return uh, 3.1. One five. Here's also here's a string immediate object, and you can make it all uppercase, reverse it, or here's a keyword message. But both of these are unary. Keyword messages index of and dollar sign t. This this means the character t. So it will tell us where where the first t is. I mentioned class. A class is an object that defines how to create an object instance. So there's an instance, and then there's the class. So for example, if I have customer, the customer class is like the customer factory. And I'll talk to the factory and create instances of the actual customers. So each customer may have a, a name, address, and phone number, and each one will be an instance but the class, the factory, is, is how I create them. And you can tell the factory, the factory starts with a capital letter. So one factory, lots of instances. So that's, when we look at the definition of a class, we'll see two sides. One that says how the factory behaves, and one that says how each instance behaves. And, and, and we'll have an example in a, in a follow-up video of creating and using a customer object. Variables. So variables, th there's multiple types of variables, but again, we're keeping things simple. The basics you need to know is that local variables start with a lowercase letter and shared variables start with an uppercase letter. And the local variables you'll see most frequently are instance variables. Instance variables are local to the object. So any method in that object can refer to that instance variable, and temporary variables are available to that method. A method is the equivalent of a function or procedure. Execution, how is it executed? Well, you go left to right, things in parentheses first, then all the unary, all the binary, and then all the keyword. That is the execution order for Smalltalk. A few other important things you'll need to know. Assignment is with is done with colon equals, so x gets 5, as it looks like this, x, and we can tell it's lowercase, so that's a an in, it's a, a local variable, x is assigned 5, period. So statements end with a period. Uh, if you want to return an object, remember you send the message, you get an object back, you can return an object from the method with the caret. So this says return x. White space doesn't matter, so you can have it all on one line or, or spread out if there was some reason. Literal objects are things that you can type in. 5, the string ABC, the uh, the character uppercase T and comments in your methods are done with double quotes. So let's look at a mini example. <clears throat> this is a class ordered collection, and that's a type of data structure. It's it's a collection of uh, an ordered collection of objects. So I can say numbers is assigned ordered collection new unary message. Numbers add 5, this is a keyword message, period. Numbers add 7. Then I can say n is assigned number size, so n will be 2. Nums gets array new. Nums at 1, put 5, and then inspect it. And you'll see that at the first position in that array, it has 5. Oh, one last thing here, between the vertical bars, this is how I define my temporary variables. So numbers and n, both lowercase, uh, st start with the lowercase, and most importantly, these are temporary variables, and nums down here is a temporary var variable. 
The example we'll go through in a later thing, but we'll create a customer class that has name, address, and phone as its instance variables for each instance. And we'll show you how to create the class, how to create instances, and how to talk to those instances. So again, this has been a part of the crash course. Any feedback, please send to athomas at syncom.com. Thank you.